All right, well, you see, this is the latest minifigure for the Elden Ring stuff I've been getting. This is Blyde, the half-wolf. Uh, it's not Blade, it's Blyde. Point is, it's cool that more of these are coming. We're getting ready for the DLC. I'm very excited. I'm a very big Elden Ring fan. So when you ask me to play tennis, I get offended, because why would I do that when I can be um, playing Elden Ring or eating soup or something, you know? Just saying for next time. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to keep looking at Windows Sandbox. I got a lot more to show you. Um, it was kind of hard yesterday to only show the basics, but the feedback's been great, so we're really going to get into it today. I, I think I've owned a tennis racket or a, a badminton stick or a, whatever the, the netty thing is, but I have never used it for, for what it's intended to be used for. Get Rubik's, solving for the modern workplace. Okay, so we're back on my, uh, call my sandbox lab. Not really, it's just a different PC. It doesn't matter. So, quick recap. We, we talked about how to make sandbox configs yesterday. Um, one thing I want to do is I want to talk about, um, I kind of have a hit list of things I want to cover today. So the first is, if you're going to be making a lot of these, WSB files, um, it's a good idea to, so here we'll do test WSB. If I open this in Visual Studio Code, right? We wanna, we wanna associate this right off the bat to be uh, XML, right? We don't have to keep changing every time. So we're gonna file uh, preferences settings. And we'll search for association, search type associations. So you can say, hey, if it's WSB, associate that with XML. And if we hit OK to that, now we're good to go. You see it automatically flipped it to, it's going to basically every time you write a WSB file, it's now going to be in the XML format, which is good. So right off the bat, that's something to help save us a little time. So let's talk about a config we want to do. Uh, here, I'm actually going to scrap this one. And uh, let's make, let's get rid of that. We don't need a test. Um, I'm going to make one called Workspace. So what I want to do here is uh, kind of a few things. So I want to kind of set up a sandbox to be my personal workspace so that on demand I can fire it up and get to work in maybe something more extensive. Maybe it's not just app testing. Maybe I want to test test several apps. Maybe I want to test registry settings. And this way I can spin up something that's a little more customized for me uh, every time. So talking about the things uh, we might want to do there. So let's go ahead and open this up. Okay, there we go. So what I want to do is I want to start with a skeleton kind of from, uh, from yesterday. Okay, we need our VP, VGPU, our networking. So one thing I'm gonna add is the memory. I wanna allocate this. Now, my workstations are pretty beefy. Um, they're all 64, 128 gigs of RAM. So um, if I wanted to, I can dedicate one with 16 gigs of RAM, uh, but you can choose that. That's the memory in megabytes. Uh, I'm gonna do eight, eight gigs of, of RAM memory and megabytes. So this way the machine definitely has a, a good amount to work with. Um, another thing I didn't touch on yesterday, but I want to turn on the clipboard redirection so that I can use the clipboard back and forth between the two, um, between my host, because if I want to paste a command or something, you know, I want the ability to do that. And that's not very destructive. Um, so it shouldn't be a problem. All right, but now let's get into our map folder. So this is where things are going to go a little bit different. So what I want to do is I want to have a, I want to mount a folder and run some scripts from there, right? So uh, I, part of what I want to do, so I'll show you here. If I go back to, you know, I had the Intune app sources. I might want to do some of that. I'm actually going to make a working folder. So I'm going to make a folder called sandbox work folder and i want to put some stuff in there i can put my app sources in there so i have them 
Okay, I can put an installer if I want to. Um, what I actually do want to put though is I want to put two things. Um, I want to put a, uh, a start command file, like a, a batch script. Um, and then I also want to put a setup file that'll actually get the, the PS, it's a PowerShell script, but this will set up the sandbox for me. Um, so we just got to make sure we mount this and start it with this. So I'll, let me talk about that in a second. So let's finish the, let's finish the XML here. So we want our mapped folders, map folders, map folders. We need our mapped folder, mapped folder. Okay. So first thing is the host folder is going to be C. Already forgot what I called it. Sandbox work folder. Okay. C sandbox work folder. Now this other attribute, the sandbox folder is how you, where you want to redirect it. So that it doesn't default to the, the WDAG utility count desktop. We can just say C work. So that once it's mounted, it's easy to call. Um, and then read only, we'll leave that as true. And you can do this with any folder, right? So you don't have to leave it on the default mapping. Okay. Uh, the other thing I want to do is my logon command. My logon command is going to be command. It's actually going to be the start cmd command uh, i actually have to point to it so it's going to be in the map directory so it's going to be in work start dot cmd command because i once it's mounted i want to call that because that's what's going to kick off the powershell script now why do that well in my experience it's the best way to kick off a powershell script because sometimes it can be finicky <laughs> so um so it's always best to do it in the, uh, it's easier to, to just do it in the command file. Uh, let me zoom in on this for you. So all the command file is going to say is PowerShell exe execution policy bypass. And the file is going to be C work setup.ps1. And that's it. That's all that's going to. That's all that that's going to do. It's just going to kick this off. And then this is where we want to go ahead and do what we want to do. So here's really the question. What do I want to do? One of the things that came up yesterday in the discussions after the video was when to use this versus a dedicated virtual machine for testing. Um, I don't think it's a clear answer. I think obviously if you want to run something quickly and it's kind of throwaway, that's good. But I think... Um, even with the throwaway mentality, a lot of times you still want your stuff, right? So you want a little bit of a setup that doesn't take too long, that is disposable. And yes, you can snapshot uh, a VM back, but uh, it's 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 more resource intense. You're kind of always maintaining that VM as opposed to this is just a quick setup config. So we're going to go through a little bit of a, not a lengthy, but I would say for a sandbox, a, a decent sized config. But just remember, it's still throw away, spin up, get rid of. So that's kind of the point here. It's just more options. Okay. So I want my comfort settings. That will mean I want the uh, task bar alignment. I want my Windows search. I want my right click context menu to not be the uh, new Windows 11 type. Um, and I want the, I'll be a pain here. I want the wallpaper. <laughs> okay. I also want my apps. So what kind of apps do I want to run here? Well, I want Notepad++. I want VS Code. Maybe I want DLC and Firefox. I'm kind of making up those last two, but um, you, you, you get my point. Uh, and how are we going to achieve this? Well, we're going to achieve this like any PowerShell script, right? So for the settings, what I'm going to do 
is I'm gonna do some reg exe add hkl taskbar alignment is gonna be uh, hk hkcu Microsoft Windows current version Explorer advanced the taskbar alignment that's a reg e word zero force out host okay let me shrink this back a little bit just so we fit the whole thing there all right nice the windows search now is going to be uh similar so we're going to say and hklm software policies microsoft windows windows search okay that is search on taskbar mode reg keyword and i believe that's a one my right click is a little crazier so i'm actually gonna paste that in there we go but i'll make this available um so you have it in uh in the github uh, but that just puts my right click back now wallpaper now this is kind of silly you don't need to do this but i'm going to show you how anyway um i understand if it's ridiculous i absolutely do <laughs> there's no reason you necessarily need your wallpaper aside from a comfort thing but these things are good to know it's fun it's you know it's uh why not right microsoft windows current version policies system so you need two keys for the wallpapers first one is wallpaper and it's a string and the value there is going to be path to wallpaper dot png so we we're going to talk about that in a second and then the second thing you'll need for the wallpaper is the value of the style so that'll be wallpaper style that'll be a d word and that's simply going to be um the number four so if you do want to do this with the wallpaper make sure it's mounted inside your sandbox work folder so i'm gonna actually take one of my pictures here let's see what i got um i am gonna go with the ninja cat on the dinosaur so i'm gonna call this ninja cat dot jpeg so this will be in the work directory so it'll be c work ninja cat dot jpeg make sure i got that right ninja cat dot jpeg yep and that'll mount that for me okay so that'll take care of my comfort settings what about the apps well the best way to do this is with chocolatey so i'm going to invoke expression new object system dot uh, net dot web client download string is https chocolatey dot org install dot ps1 that'll put chocolatey on the machine and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to list my apps apps equals i'll do a little array here so this will be notepad plus plus dot install We'll do VS Code. We'll do, uh, oh, 7-Zip would be good, actually. I almost forgot that one. I like 7-Zip. Uh, I'll do Firefox, and I'll do VLC. So now all I have to do is say for each app in apps, and this will be the Choco command. Choco install app Y. Okay, that's my setup file. I have my start file to run that, and this is all in the sandbox 
uh, this is all in the sandbox folder that's being mounted to work right here. So let's give this a shot and see what it looks like. Oh, wait, wait, before we do that, I forgot something. One thing I forgot is after all these settings, because a lot of them are user, we have to stop the Explorer and restart it. Uh, Explorer force. Okay. Now we're ready to go. Let's see. Okay, so it immediately adjusted my, look at that. It adjusted the alignment, the search bar, the wallpaper, my right click is normal. So that's didn't take very long. That was a few seconds. And from an app standpoint, the app should start installing because um, chocolate is running. So I'm just going to give it a minute. And if I go to all apps, I could start checking. So 7-Zip is already here. Notepad++ is here. So these are all being installed and I'm just going to wait for the, for the other ones. It looks like, um, I'm sure VS Code and Firefox take longer. VLC just showed up. So we're good there. So we're barely at like a minute here and you know, I, I, it's not like it takes a long time to, to run these apps. You know, the alternative you can do too, is you could just package all your installers inside the folder and just run the executables and MSIs. But I mean, as long as you have internet connection, there's no reason to, uh, to have to do it that way. If everything's just kind of piling up here, which is good. Okay. And if we also check, um, I want to check where we mounted that folder. So you can see, I have my work folder which was my run and sandbox. I have all my app sources if I want to practice packaging apps and things like that, which is cool. There's my Ninja Cat picture. These were the setup files. So everything mounted to where I wanted it to. The other thing we want to look at is we just want to look at the system to make sure it was allocated the eight gigs of RAM. And it is. So yeah, we're pretty good to go here. So I like when uh, you have, uh, again, options. It's a simple thing. You can do a default Windows sandbox. We can mount a folder or we could take it as far as this where we're kind of customizing a little bit, especially if we're going to spend more than a few minutes in there. So it's nice to have the options and I can have different configs and just keep populating them, right? I could spin up my temporary one. I could spin up this more, this one I'm going to work in for longer. So you can have a whole folder of configs. The last thing we're going to get into uh, in, in part three um, is going to be really cool. It's definitely aimed at Intune. Uh, app testing more so than than anything we've done yet. So, uh, you know, keep the feedback coming, hop in the discord, let me know what you think and we'll be seeing you.